I. So we'll continue with the uh, studying bifurcations in today's lecture. So um, in the previous lectures, we had studied the different kinds of bifurcations that can take place and their prototypical forms. So we had basically seen what saddle road bifurcation was, what transcritical bifurcations were, and what are known as pitchfork bifurcations, both subcritical and supercritical ones. Uh, so uh, the first problem that we'll start with today, it shows that uh, different kinds of bifurcations can take place in a single setting, something which we had not seen earlier. So let us see what that problem looks like. So. Okay. So suppose I have a problem. It says that x dot equal to rx minus some x. So this is my evidence. Now, what are the fixed points of this equation? The fixed points are given by sorry, equal to zero. In other words. Sign x star. So this is a transcendental equation, and uh, solving this transcendental equation, we will be able to find the fixed points. Now let us see how the fixed points change and what kinds of bifurcation take place as we vary this parameter called r. So let us start with the simplest case when um, r is equal to zero. So when r is equal to zero, then the graph of f of x, f of x is nothing but minus sin x. So its graph looks like this. Right. So the fixed points will be the intersections of this curve with the x-axis. So this is one fixed point, this is one fixed point, and so on. So this is at zero, this is at by, sorry, by, by, by and so on. And what are the stabilities of these six points? So the fixed point at the origin, it is stable. This one is unstable. This one is stable. Again, this one is unstable. So you see they have alternating stabilities. Now, what happens if we increase R? So then you have a situation like this. So suppose that uh, R is greater than zero. And let us assume that R is very small. So I would only show you a few iterations of the few crests and straps of the sign curve. It's not possible to show all of them together. So suppose this is my minus sign x function, which also looks like this. And uh, R equal to x will basically be a straight line passing through the origin like this. Okay. So then the fixed points of this equation are the points of intersection of this y equal to rx graph with the minus sin x square. Okay, so this is one fixed point. And uh, if you try to map the fixed points over here, then uh, here there is one fixed point, here there is one fixed point, here there is a fixed point. Okay, so these are the fixed points of the equation. Now, what is the stability of the fixed point? So we had seen that the f of x was rx minus sin x. That means uh, this is greater than zero if Rx is greater than sin x and uh, f of x is less than zero if Rx is less than sin x. Right, so this will tell me in which direction the flow is. So for example, in this portion between zero and the first positive fixed point, the curve Rx is above sin x, so the flow is towards the right. Here it is towards the left. So this is a stable fixed point. 
again here the flow is towards the right it is towards the left as it is again a stable response similarly over here the flow uh, over here is towards the left and uh, Sorry, this will be if, uh, Rx plus or minus Rx. Right? So I must have the reactions over here. So here the flow is in this direction. So this is unstable. And uh, the flow is towards this fixed point. So this is a stable fixed point. Again, this one is an unstable fixed point. And this one is a stable fixed point. So the reduction of the flow will be like this. So you see there are fixed points and alternating versus stable, unstable, uh, stable, unstable, unstable fixed points. Okay. So U S U S. Alright, so as you increase the uh, parameter R, what happens is that this curve starts to move upwards. And then there comes a point where this curve just about intersects this uh, y equal to sinus function over here. And then the two fixed points will disappear in a sudden mode bifurcation. So if you draw the bifurcation diagram, it will look like this. So I draw it for R greater than 0. Okay, so initially the origin was a stable fixed point and uh, so it's unstable, right? Now you go to zero. So it's stable, unstable, unstable. So we are also saying stable, 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 stable. Okay. So now as you uh, increase the parameter R, what happens is that this fixed point is going to approach this one, this will approach this point, and they disappear in the side node by rotation. And at the same point where this side node by rotation takes place, there is another side node by rotation on the symmetrically opposite side where these two fixed points disappear. As you increase R, you have these two fixed points which goes each other like this. But and they also disappear in a saddle node by position. And you see that finally, if you keep on increasing R, then all the fixed points will disappear, and finally the fixed point at the origin will remain. So this is an example which shows us that multiple uh, by types of bifurcation can occur upon increasing the parameter. And so this was different from the prototypical examples which we had seen earlier, where only one uh, bifurcation occurred as you change the given parameter. Okay, so now that we are done with this. Let us move on to a new topic related to bifurcations only, which we will try to cover in today's lecture. And these are what are known as imperfect bifurcations.
Now, imperfect bifurcations are those bifurcations which can take place when the uh, dynamical system it does not obey any of the prototypical forms which we have seen before, but there is a certain imperfection parameter which is added to it. For example, consider the system which we had seen earlier. So, x dot equal to rx minus x is q. So, this is a system which initially had uh, given us a supercritical system of bifurcation. What we now do is that we consider this new dynamical system where x dot equal to rx minus x is q plus h. So h we call the imperfection parameter. So you see now there are two parameters in this problem. One parameter is R and the other parameter is H. So, what are the different kinds of bifurcation does this system show? Does this keep on showing this pitch work which we had seen earlier, or is there something else? So, a good way of analyzing this system is to say you have this function f of x given by Rx minus x plus h. So you break this up into two parts. You suppose that uh, y1 equal to rx minus x is equal to and y2 equal to minus h. Okay. And then what you do is that you ask for what are the fixed points of this equation. So the fixed points are given basically by f of x equal to 0. So f of x equal to 0 corresponds to the y1 equal to y2. So they are basically given by the intersection between the curves y1 and y2. Okay. So we know we have seen the form of y1 for different values of r previously. Right. So uh, when you had a we had a r less than or equal to 0. Then uh, we had uh, this particular form for y1. So y1 went like this. Right. When r is less than or equal to 0. And then if you consider this curve y2 equal to minus h. So uh, if h is positive, then it will be somewhere over here. And if h is negative, it will be somewhere over here. Right. So these curves are y2 and uh, this is my y1. So you see uh, there is only one fixed point over here. This fixed point can be either here or it can be here. And the stability of the fixed point is again given by whether y1 is greater than y2 or not. So f of x Is nothing but y1 minus y2, right? So um, this fixed point, uh, the flow in this region, when uh, y1 is below y2, it will be towards the left, it flows towards the right. So it's a stable fixed point over here. And similarly, over here also, uh, y1 is less than y2, the flows towards the left, and the flows towards the right, and the stable fixed point. So the conclusion is that. When R is less or equal to zero, there is only one fixed point in the system, right? And it is a stable fixed point. And regardless of the value of H, this fixed point is always stable. Okay, now let us see what happens if uh, R is greater than zero. So when R is greater than zero, then the curve 
y1 looks like this. We had all seen this from uh, previously. Right. So then what happens is I will draw this a bit more properly. Right. This is somewhat correct. So one thing to note is that the height of the minimum. This is always symmetric over the y axis. Okay, so this can be as well as Okay, so these two heights are the same. Main condition. Okay, now let us suppose that uh, depending on the value of h, y can either be here. It can be here or it can be here anywhere in between or it can be as well or it can be here. Okay. So you see that um, if H is very small, so we call this. So when um, H the y the y to equal to H curve just about is tangential with one of the extreme of the function. We call this uh, the value as the critical value of h as a function of r. So here also, which we denoted as f1, this is basically the critical value of h. Right. So when uh, the magnitude of y2 it is a uh, greater than the critical value of h, then you see that there is only one fixed point, which is over here. And this fixed point turns out to be a stable fixed point again. So again, you have this fixed point over here. And again, this will be a stable fixed point. And when is uh, when y2 is Amplitude of magnitude of y two is equal to or equal to or h or h. So when mod h is just equal to this critical value of h, then what happens is that there is a saddle node bifurcation which occurs over here at this point and here at this point. So let us suppose we are going from bottom to top. So as you uh, basically uh, decrease h from positive to negative, this curve goes upwards, and there's a saddle node bifurcation here, and then you have two fixed points for me, one over here and one over here, and there is a third fixed point over here. So the third fixed point here is the stable one, as you can see from the relation to points. But here, this one, this is unstable, and the one on the left is a stable fixed point. So as you keep increasing uh, the value of Decreasing the value of page, these two phase points they move apart while retaining the stability. And finally, what happens is that when y two the magnitude of y uh, h again becomes equal to the critical value, that means h becomes equal to minus h c. Then there is a saddle node bifurcation which takes place over here, and these two fixed points they disappear in that saddle node bifurcation. All right. So uh, one thing which we can do is that we can calculate what is the critical value of h at which this occurs, and this will be a function of r. So how do we do that? Of course, we need to find the maxima and the minima of the function f by f dash x. So r minus x squared equal to zero. This means that the value of x 
that puts the function against this maximum value will be plus minus over r by 3. So then the value of f at this value of x that is f at x equal to this will basically give me the critical value of h. So this is uh, r in the so since we are uh, so one critical value of h will be positive and the other will be negative and the magnitudes will be the same. So we just uh, find the positive value over here. This is minus. Right. So this turns out to be equal to. This is nothing but the value of it should be. So, and h equal to value. There is a saddle by condition. and the fixed points are formed or destroyed depending on whether h is increased from negative to positive or positive to negative all right so what we can now do is that uh, we can uh, plot the bifurcation diagram of this fixed points upon keeping r at a fixed value that means on varying the parameter h only. So what would that look like? So if you have a r less or equal to zero, then we saw that the case was very simple. There was only one fixed point, which um, went from positive to negative value as h is increased from positive to negative. Right. So then. The bifurcation diagram simply looks like this. Let's start. This is H. And when R is greater than zero, then what happens is that when H was uh, increased from negative to positive values, there is initially a fixed point which is negative. So you initially had the fixed point over here, which went like this. And there was a saddle node bifurcation, which gave rise to two fixed points on the positive side. So here, there is a saddle node bifurcation, which occurs. So there is one fixed point which goes up like that. And there is another fixed point which goes like this. And this comes over here and the two of them again merge and disappear in this saturn or bifurcation.
Okay. So this was what I was talking about. So this is the unstable link and the other ones are the stable links. We can also take a look at the bifurcation diagram upon keeping each fixed and varying R. So uh, there can they can be of two types depending on whether H is equal to zero and whether H is not zero. So you can say suppose you if H fixed at H equal to zero, then the bifurcation diagram is nothing but the pitch curve bifurcation diagram which we had to see now here. So what was a fixed point? The origin which was stable, and then there are two branches like this, and the origin becomes unstable. And uh, when H is not equal to zero, then suppose that um, we are we are situated uh, somewhere over here on the lower side, where there is always a fixed point on the positive side. And then what happens is that The following by the question diagram. So, uh, this fixed point will always exist like this. And beyond a certain positive value of R, you will have a sudden perturbation of one fixed point which tries to improve solution. And the other fixed point, which is like this. Now, uh, the important thing which we can attempt in this problem is that since uh, there are two parameters in the system, R and H, we can plot what is known as a stability diagram. Stability diagram is nothing but uh, uh, the diagram which is drawn in the parameter space of R and H, which tells us uh, which positions, which uh, regions in the parameter space have how many fixed points and what kinds of fixed points. So basically, they tell us about the stability of the system in different regions of the parameter space. So what will be the stability diagram of the system? So the stability diagram can the hints about the stability diagram can be obtained from this figure itself in seeing how the nature of the fixed point change is a very age. So for uh, when, when R is uh, less than zero, there is only one fixed point, right? That is confirmed. And when R is greater than zero, there can be one or three fixed points depending upon the value of H. And what is that value of H? That is the critical value of H. So the stability diagram would look like this. So H into so H C we had on to be R by G over R by G. So this is the equation that will separate the regions in the stability diagram between one fixed point and the fixed points. So suppose this is um, R equal to zero. And uh, this is the R axis, this is the H axis, and suppose that this is H equal to zero. So then the HC curve will look like this. So this is HC of R. Minus H of R. So if you look at the region where R is greater than zero, so if H lies between these critical values, then there are two fixed points. So all of this region, this has three fixed points, and all of this region over here, this has only one fixed point. And across these lines, you have these sad node bifurcations. 
as you transition from the one fixed point to the three fixed point region, there are certain implications. So this now gives us a complete picture of this problem. But you might argue that what about X star? So what you can do is that this is not actually the complete picture. In fact, the complete picture would be if you are able to draw it in the space of X star R and H. So there you would get what are known as surfaces in that region. So let us consider this diagram where we try to draw it in the three dimensional space of X, R and H. So this is X star. This is my H and this is R. So we had seen before that um, we had a bifurcation code which looked like this. So this is in the RH plane, right? So how would it translate in the? And if you remember the X versus H diagrams, they look like this. So this was extra versus R, and uh, this was extra versus H. So basically, what we would see is that there is a sheet-like region over here. So basically, when R is zero, there was only one fixed point. So this is a single fixed point, and when R exceeds zero, there is something like this, as we had seen before. So you have a sheet like this. So there appears that to be some sort of a cusp in this sheet over here. If you draw it to the back like this, draw the folds on the sheet, you find that there is a cusp on the sheet like this. And this cusp corresponds to the r equal to zero, h equal to zero point. So before this, there was only one fixed point and when R exceeds zero, there is a jump like this where the fixed point drops from the top to the bottom. So there is a, another hysteresis like phenomenon over here. So since this picture is more complicated, I guess that this is actually a simpler way of visualizing the system. Okay, so let us take a look at an example problem of an imperfect bifurcation. So here we had uh, studied an imperfect uh, supercritical pitchfork bifurcation. I guess the problem which we will now look at would study an imperfect transcritical bifurcation. So we had uh, seen that the parameter that the prototypical equation for a transcritical bifurcation looks like this. So now. So now we have to analyze the system for h less than zero, h equal to zero, and h greater than zero. So we ask what it looks like. So when uh, h equal to zero. Let us recap the form of the transcritical bifurcation which we had seen before. So here, uh, here we had uh, 
So this was for. This was, I think, for. Um, Okay, so this is for R less than zero. The original is stable fixed point, and uh, when R becomes greater than zero, it becomes unstable, and this one becomes stable. Okay, so this was for h equal to zero. Now let us consider what happens when um, say h is less than zero. So again, you have to we had a So there can be different things which can happen over here. Okay. So see that uh, both when R is greater than zero or R is less than zero. So suppose we consider this case R is greater than zero. The curve would look like this, and then you can have uh, y two over here or y two over here. Or it might just intersect this curve over here. So here uh, there are no fixed points, and when it just about intersects the curve, there are two fixed points: one over here and one over here. Right. So this is H C, the critical value of H, where this curve y two just about intersects curve one. And below this there are two fixed points. So the one on the right is the Stable fixed point. The one on the left is the stable point. So there is a sorry not bifurcation at this critical value of H, like we had seen before. Now we ask what is this critical value of H? So as we had done previously, we have to find a dash of X, uh, which turns out to be R minus two times. We create this to zero. So this will uh, give us x equal to x equal to r by two. So if we plug this back into this equation, then Minus x is equal to so So this turns out to be the critical value of H. So when H is less than zero, 
which are formed by the uh, saddle node bifurcation. All right, and what happens if um, H is greater than zero? So if H is greater than zero, then you see that there will always be two fixed points, right? Because the lowest that the parabola can go to is like this, and h greater than zero implies that this is the wide way. So there will always be one fixed point here and one here. So this to one and the chance to one. So then what does the question that we ask now is what does the stability diagram look like? Because bifurcation diagrams, you can do it. You can also give it a try. So the stability diagram we will draw in the space of H and R. So this is R. This is H. So this will basically give me an idea of the stability diagram. So H. So when H is below minus H C, so the minus H C curve. The minus H C curve is basically a parabola. Right. This is basically a parabola. Okay, let us just take a look. Parabola should be intercepted at R equal to zero. Okay, so yeah, so what we see is that this region over here where H is greater than zero. And everywhere that H is in fact greater than this critical value, this region has only no of sorry, you are disputed. Uh, not no, but two fix points. This region over here. This region has no fixed points. And across this line over here, there will be saddle node bifurcations, which actually give rise to the fixed points that we see over here. So here we have drawn a diagram. The stability diagram for what happens if you have a certain imperfection in a transcritical bifurcation. And similarly, there can be other problems where you can have imperfections coming in in different forms, not only an additive form, but they can also come in as a multiplicative factor on the right hand side of the equation. Okay. So those are basically uh, special cases which depend on the system one is considering. So now what we will do is that we will study a physical example of where a catastrophe can occur. And this 
physical example is nothing but an example of an insect outbreak. So I'll start with this insect outbreak in a couple of minutes time.
OK, so now let us look at. What the insect outbreak model says. So let us uh, first look at the physical picture. So you know uh, this insect outbreak model, it was first proposed by. Ludwig et al. In. 1978. So this is actually a model of a bardworm population. So the bardworm population is actually a dangerous pest in eastern Canada. What it does is that the bardworm it attacks the leaves of the balsam fir tree, and when an outbreak happens, then the bardworms they feed on the trees and kill most of the fir, fir trees in the forest. So, but once they try to kill fir trees, and if there is an outbreak, then they can make an entire forest disappear in only four years. So the killing rate is very fast. And but the regeneration rate of a forest, so you know, a forest takes a longer time to go. So what Ludwig and others have done, that they had simplified the form a problem. By assuming that there are two different time scale in the system. So one, there is a fast time scale. So what is the fast time scale? The fast time scale is the time scale associated with the growth of the particular population. Why do they call this a fast time scale? Because it was known that these worms they can double their population, or in fact, their population can increase 5x times in a year. And what was the slow variable? The slow variable, as I mentioned earlier, was the growth and death of trees. So it takes about. Seven to ten years. For the trees. To. Replenish. The forest. So you see. This gives me. Slow time scale. Okay, so the past time scales are associated with the growth of uh, with the growth of the bardwell population, and the slow time scale is associated with the growth of trees. So, what one can uh, do is that as a simplification, one can assume that the Dynamics of the forest variables are constant, or in other words, the forest variables can be treated as a constant, and the bardworm population can be allowed to evolve. All right. So, and then as the forest, uh, so basically, uh, this should remind us of these questions which we are looking at when we are studying the cast, when we are studying the catastrophes. So, in catastrophes, also we had our the imperfect bifurcations. We had this imperfection parameter. Which was varied, and that imperfection parameter we can assume that okay that that parameter is varied slowly with respect to the other parameter. So similarly in this case, if the other parameter is varied, then we have a given bifurcation curve, and if the imperfection parameter is kept fixed at a different value, and we vary the other parameter, we can have another kind of bifurcation. So this is what we will see in this problem that if the forest variables are kept fixed at a particular value, we will have one set of fixed points. Which will say show that the by the bardworm population does not produce an outbreak, and there is actually a stable growth. I mean, there is a stable equilibrium where the bardworm populations can reach without giving an outbreak. But for certain different values of this forest parameter, we'll see that there arises another new stable state, and that stable state will correspond to an outbreak in the population. Okay, so the model that they proposed over here. The 
the dynamical model for the Bartholomew population dynamics is like this. So D and D two equal to where n of t is the part of population r is the two three K is the adding capacity and often K is determined by the amount of foliage which is left in the trees. So we consider K to be a slowly changing parameter. Because it depends upon the number of trees, and as the bloom population feed on the trees, k can decrease, or if the trees keep on growing, then k can increase as well. And this term p of n over here, p n is the predation rate, which is responsible for the death of bloom's. So this parameter p is the predation rate. And mind you, this is always greater than zero. So the predation rate can be due to the birth worms getting eaten by the birds mainly. So this is like a death rate. And uh, the predation rate Pn has this kind of form. So um, if this is n and the uh, y axis is P of n. So it basically goes like this. So you see that here you have a parameter called A and so what this tells is that when the bloom population is small, that is when n is small, then Pn is also small. So if there are less bird worms, then the bird will then the birds will feed less on them. So the predation rate is small. Beyond the critical value of A, the predation rate rises rapidly. So as soon as the number of bird worms exceed a particular value, the birds start eating them more and more. And finally, it goes on to saturate at a given value of B. So when it saturates, then basically this means that the birds are eating as fast as they can. So Ludwig, what he had done was that he had chosen P such that it took this particular form. So the form of Pn, which he had chosen, looked like this. So P of n is equal to Pn squared by A squared plus n squared, where the parameters A and B are both greater than zero. So then the entire model can be written as minus it's well by plus Okay. So the first thing that we do is that there are four parameters R, E, K and A. And so the system can be non dimensionalized in various ways. And non dimensionalization often helps in both 
numerical and analytical ways to help us to solve the problem. So one way of non-dimensionalizing the system is to consider that we define a variable x as by a. So when x basically this physically means that when x exceeds one, then the prediction rate increases very fast. And when x is less than one, then the prediction rate is small. Okay, as we had seen in this graph over here. So this dimensionalization then gives us that uh, equal to By so this implies that we can also not dimensionalize the other thing. So for example, we can define a time scale tau as and define the growth rate R. And similarly, we can define normalize the carrying capacity K as A by A. So you see the normalization of the carrying capacity and the population number is the same. That's an important thing because they should have the same dimensions. So therefore, this implies that the non-dimensional model it looks like e x by tau is equal to r x one minus by b. Minus system by minus system. So this is the model that we now have to analyze using whatever we have learned. So the first thing that we do is that we try to analyze the fixed points of the system. Fixed points. So from this equation, we will see that an obvious fixed point is the origin. That is x star equal to zero is a fixed point of the system. So uh, how do we know whether this uh, fixed point is stable or not? Basically. Uh, to find the right hand side as f of x. And we calculate the derivative of x f of x. So f of x at is equal to zero. So if you would uh, calculate this derivative at x equal to zero, this turns out to be equal to what? This is equal to r. All right. And r parameter is always greater than zero, which means that zero is Unstable. So the fixed point is unstable for all values of the parameter because R is kept as fixed. 
um, important because um, R is always written in zero. So an important thing about non-dimensionalization, as you saw, was that initially we had four parameters, A, B, K, and R. But now in this problem, the system, there are only two parameters, which is R and K. So we will now study the fixed points and the bifurcations in this case of parameters R and K. So the origin was one fixed point. What are the other fixed points? The other fixed points are basically given by this equation, solutions to this equation that and minus Okay, now this equation is very difficult to solve analytically. So, but it is easier to analyze it on a graph. So, we, what we do is that we plot a graph of the right hand side and the left hand side, and we check the points where the two graphs intersect with each other. So, you will notice that the right hand side is free of parameters. So, its form always remains the same. And it will remain unchanged. So this is the form of the right hand side that we have. Good, I think. Okay, this looks better. So this is the form of the right hand side. I'm sorry, this is going to be here. This is x by one plus x squared, and the left hand side, which is r into one minus x by k. This will be a straight line with a slope that is given by minus r by k. In other words, and the y intercept will be r and the x intercept will be k basically. So this will look like this. Something like this. Where this point is k and this point is r. So the fixed point is basically given by the intersection of the fixed points, which is somewhere over here. So now let us see what happens as we change the parameters. So now let us suppose that um, R is fixed and we change K, okay. So if you see that uh, if K is less than a particular value, no matter, so let us uh, first assume that K is fixed at a particular value. So if k is fixed and k is a small value, then no matter how big r is, there is always one fixed point, as you can see from the graph over here. So here k is small. So here k is basically less than some critical value, which we can say as kc. So when that happens, then there is only One fixed point in the system. Okay. And this fixed point, suppose it is a stable or unstable. So the other part of f of x, it was it was basically it was basically the left hand side minus the right hand side. Right. So basically it was the straight line minus the curved part. So when the straight line is below the curve, but the flow would be towards the left, and the straight line is a uh, uh, yeah, then the flow will towards the left, and the, and the straight line is above the curve line, the flow will towards the right. So this fixed point, it is a stable fixed point. So when k is less than kc. What is the inference that we draw from here? There is 
are two fixed points. Let us call this fixed point as x1. One is x1 to 0, and the other fixed point is x star equal to x1. And this is unstable. And this is stable. Mind you, when r is equal to 0, then both are the same fixed point that is the origin. As you are increase r from 0, then the origin remains unstable and there is a stable fixed point which comes. So, in some sense, you can say that there is a transmitting bipolarization, but that is a different thing. Okay. Now, let us see what happens if k exceeds a particular value. Okay. So, let us say that uh, now the k it is greater than this value, which is a critical value of kc. Then what happens is that there can be a situation where we can have four fixed points. In other words, three except the origin. So this situation will look somewhat like this. So suppose uh, this is x. So then suppose you can have a situation. Suppose you have a uh, e is somewhere over here. You can have a situation which is like this. Where there is only one fixed point, or you can have a situation like this. Where there are one, two, and three fixed points. So let us take a look at the fixed points over here. So this fixed point, as we had seen earlier, this is a stable fixed point. And as you increase k, you have this fixed point over here. Sorry, as you increase r for a given value of k. So this is suppose r1, this is suppose r2. Then there is a fixed point over here, right? And you have the fixed point here as well. And what are the stabilities of the fixed point? This one is stable as it was. This fixed point in the middle, this is an unstable fixed point. And this is stable one now. So you see, there are two fixed points now. Initially, we had only x1. Now you have this was x1. Now you have x1 x2 and x3 in addition to the fixed point at x equal to 0 where x1 and x3 are the stable fixed points and the origin is an unstable fixed point so initially for a value of k below a critical value we had only one stable fixed point that is one steady state value now the population can have two steady state value one is a smaller steady state and the other is a Larger steady state.
So now there are two steady states in the population when the carrying capacity is greater than the critical value, the smaller and the larger one. So what we see is that we now define this x1 as the huge, and we define x3 as the outbreak level. And this was the fixed point at the origin. So if you look at uh, this line over here, you will see that if the initial population of the birdworms, it was between x star and x star and x2, then it will always get attracted to the refuge level at x1. On the other hand, if the initial population of the birdworm at any time exceeds x2, then it will go over to the outbreak population of x3. So this is how an outbreak can be triggered by slowly varying the parameter k. So when we saw that uh, this outbreak level did not even exist when k was less than the critical value, right? There was only one fixed point, which was the stable fixed point. That was a low bar low population. But now because we had increased k, that means or in physical language, k basically meant the carry carrying capacity. So you see that if you gradually increase the number of trees in the forest, then there are more trees for the birdworms to feed on. So if the birdworm population at that point of time is above a certain critical level, which is basically X2, then it will always go over to an outbreak and then it will fill the forest. So this is how uh, we have shown that imperfect bifurcations can lead to the modeling of insect outbreaks as well. Now let us get into more details about this thing. So now we want to study the basically the bifurcation curves and the stability diagram. So uh, as discussed previously, we had the equation for the fixed point to be given by the intersection of these two curves, right? And the condition for the saddle node bifurcation to take place is that this curve on the left hand side, this thing should be tangential to this thing. All right, because once they're tangential, then only the saddle node bifurcation occurs over here. So we need to find out that condition. So when they're tangential, then their slope should be equal. So basically, we have. Uh, Dx of versus one minus x. x. So if we solve this, then we can And so this is one condition which should be satisfied. And the other condition should be satisfied is that at that location, there should be a fixed point. Or in other words, at that location, we must have So earlier we had seen that we would we were able to eliminate all the parameters and find out an equation between R and K. So let us see if we are able to do the same thing over here or not. So basically what we do is that we substitute the value of R by K from one into two. So this is nothing but
Oops. So if you solve this, you will get and and since we had um, minus R by K is equal to this thing, so, uh, so, um, uh, so it's this one is there. Okay. So, so, so. So this implies that A is basically this is two minus one. So the way to find the parameter, the parametric or uh, the bifurcation, the stability diagrams, that means the curves in the X, Y plane when the bifurcations occur is that uh, you basically have to put in the plug in the values of different values of x from minus infinity to plus infinity and see what equation three and equation four gives us. So the one thing that we notice that we have the constraints that r should be greater than zero and a should be greater than zero. So the fact that R is greater than zero implies that you should always have X greater than zero. So we can only put in positive values of X in three and four. Furthermore, you see that um, K has to be greater than zero. This implies that X is minus one should be greater than zero. Or in other words, X must be greater than one. So putting in all values from X equal to plus one to infinity, we can actually find the values of K and R. And in that way, we plot the bifurcation diagrams in this for K and R basically. So, What I would do with here is that I would simply show you how the bifurcation diagram looks like. I mean, sorry, the stability diagram looks like without going into further details about this calculation, which you can surely try. So the stability diagram would look like this. This case of A and R. So this is our equal to zero, this is equal to zero. So basically you have one curve like this. So this is the refuge level. Okay, so when R is less than zero or have the population to be at the refuge level and here you have the outbreak. So um, one condition for the outbreak was that the case should have been greater than the critical value. 
so one can see that the critical value of k lies somewhere over here so this is k equal to k critical so when k is below k critical you will always have the refuge level no matter how high the value of r is so when k is greater than k critical then for a high value of r you might have an outbreak and for a low value of r you will you will not have the outbreak basically you will have only a single fixed point which is a stable fixed point I'll just uh, stop sharing and share the screen again. It's somehow. It's about now. Recording. So just in case if the calculation did not come up, I'll just explain. I had already explained the steps. So equation one and equation two is what we use to find the fixed points. Basically, this is the tan equation for the tangent and this is the equation for the fixed point. And using that, we find the point where the saddle of bifurcation takes place. And the positions where the bifurcation just started is given by three and four. And since so we have it, it is difficult to solve three and four analytically. So, an hand holding argument is basically you put in plug in values of x and you then you find what the corresponding k and r is. And this is the constraint that we must have on x for k and r to be both greater than zero. And then we have this stable diagram moving stability diagram over here in the space of r and k, where this is the outbreak region and we have the refuge region. And then we have the place where the population is basically bistable. All right, by bistable, we mean that uh, there can be basically um, both the fixed points. So this outbreak was something which we had non not shown over here. So the outbreak basically occurs when you are saying that you increase R to tremendous high values. So right. So basically what happens is that when R is very large, then we have something like which looks like this. All right, so this is R equal to our R3. So then you have only one fixed point over here. That is, you only have X3 and X3 is a stable fixed point. So basically, if you keep on increasing R further, then X1 and X2 uh, disappear in another saddle node by addition, and you have only X3. So that is why the Stability diagram had this particular form. So across uh, these two arms, when k is greater than k critical, there is a saddle node bifurcation over here and a saddle node bifurcation over here. So the first saddle node bifurcation it gives us the bistability. That means it gives us two fixed points: the outbreak level fixed point and the unstable one in between. And as we increase up further and further, the unstable fixed point collides with the refuge fixed point and it disappears, and we have only the outbreak level. So the important message which this tells us is that if k is greater than a critical value, that means if there are too many number of trees in the forest, and for some reason the bardmore population growth is very large, then there will be an outbreak of population because they will keep on eating the trees and the population will keep on growing exponentially large. So this is how we can uh, solve, we can get an insight into the outbreak of insects from the point of view of dynamical systems. There will also be one more problem about this, which I will probably discuss in the next class. That is a model for fisheries, where as you know, controlling the fish population in fisheries is important for both the economy as well as for feeding the population. All right. So today's class, I will finally end with uh, one example. 
So this is an example which is motiv motivated by basically seeing patterns in a fluid. And this was basically like the subcritical pitch for bifurcation, which we had seen before. OK. So. The motivation for this problem is basically to study. So the patterns in So when we talk of patterns, basically we talk about amplitudes in Fourier space. OK, so a pattern basically comes when certain number of nodes in Fourier space are amplified much more than the other nodes, and then you have patterns at that wave number forming. All right, so here we have a dynamical equation for the amplitude of the patterns. And this is the approximately it is given by this sort of an equation. Epsilon A. So you will see that this looks like the familiar form of a supercritical pitch for bifurcations. Or you can also have patterns which form from equations which look like a subcritical pitch for bifurcation. So again, minus G A Q plus sorry, minus A. The power function. This equation is often known as the equation. So uh, let us see how when the patterns of bifurcation emerge, how do they depend? How does the amplitude of the pattern depend upon these parameters? OK, that is the first thing which we are going to look at. So first, let us consider the Landau equation itself. So then we have a dot is equal to uh, a by Tau epsilon by G epsilon. The epsilon is a small dimensionless parameter which measures the distance from the bifurcation. And uh, basically, uh, G greater than zero implies. Supercritical and for the subcritical case, we have G less than zero and K greater than zero. Just the subcritical case. So you see that the fixed point is basically given by. For the Landau equation, is given by a star is equal to square root of epsilon by j. By the fixed point, I mean the non-zero fixed point where the amplitude is non-zero. So, as you increase the parameter epsilon, the fixed point scales as the amplitude of the pattern. It scales with epsilon as epsilon to the power of half. Now, let us consider the subcritical case when g is equal to zero. And we consider the subcritical case. So in that case, how do the amplitude of the patterns grow with respect to epsilon? So in that case, the governing equation is basically a equal to um a a by tau. A 
final set to be found. So the amplitudes are the non-zero fixed points. Given by x1 by k to power of by four, which shows that the amplitude scales as epsilon to the power of one by four. So now in experience on Taylor Fred vortex flow, some researchers were able to change the parameter g continuously from positive to negative by varying the ratio aspect ratio of the experimental setup. So now let us assume that there is a slight imperfection in the equation. So the new equation is basically now given by tau k dot g a q minus k a to the power five, where we have imperfection h is greater than zero. Um, epsilon is again greater than zero, and uh, you have a uh, sorry epsilon can be anything and a is greater than zero. So we now the task for us is to sketch sketch the bifurcation diagram of a star. So what we need to find out is that the bifurcation G greater equal to and less than zero. So first, uh, let us start off with the case when uh, G is greater than zero. So in this case, for different values of epsilon, the curve will have different terms. So again, what we do is that we consider uh, if a equal to zero to be written as minus h epsilon a plus g a q minus a q bar pi. So when we have epsilon less or equal to zero, then uh, this curve goes to plus and at negative and minus and at positive. Okay. So this thing looks like this. So that becomes function of a, and you have the curve by so I do this as y. So y2 and y one intersection will be the fixed point and there will always be one fixed point and that will be the stable fixed point, right? The stable fixed point from the stable fixed point. So here. Okay, now when, um, Epsilon is greater than zero. Then again, depending upon we saw what what we got for a subtitle by the for bifurcation. So this curve will uh, look somewhat like this. And depending on the value of So for um, H uh, less than a critical value of H, we have one fixed point. And when H exceeds this critical value, by the way, H was always greater than zero. So 
basically y equal to minus y square will always be below the x axis. Then x points okay standard so bifurcation right so then the bifurcation diagram for g greater than zero look like this so like this is like we start this is epsilon we have a star that there is a standard bifurcation here The answer of this value, which is the relation, and the understanding of this value, which was here like this. And it can also be shown that if uh, g is equal to 0, then we will have the and g is equal to 0. Then this basically means that we have to solve the equation in this stage equal to e to the power 4. And again, uh, you will have a similar case where 1 plus 1 to Be at the origin and the so one fixed point will be at the origin and the and then you have two fixed points for h equal to zero this and then as h intersects this curve y one intersects y two you will have this little bit bifurcation diagram but now when uh is less than zero then different things can happen so when g is less than zero let us suppose that epsilon is less than some particular value of epsilon is one which is less than zero So then what happens is that the word will look like this. So there will be only one fixed point as you can see earlier. But um, when epsilon is one, less than epsilon. Less than some critical epsilon, epsilon C2, which is less than zero, then this curve can develop a wiggle like this. So then what will happen is that you can have Three fixed points coming over here. I'll draw this one properly. So basically, if H lies between certain bounds, then you can have a square root of here, one of here. Okay, so this remains a stable fixed point. There is an unstable fixed point here, and again a stable fixed point over here. So 
Okay, so what happens is that you have this, this stable and unstable pair. This is born from A. So this was X1, X2, and X3. They are born by a saddle node by location. And now when epsilon critical stable exceeds this value, then have five fixed points in the system. So this is what happens if so now there is a possibility of having Five fixed points in the system depending on the value of h. So we have kept h fixed over here. Now we can have a place where there are five fixed points on the So I have marked out the stable and the unstable fixed points. And finally, when Epsilon makes its critical value of epsilon C2. Then what we have is that so we have now again two fixed points. So this is now stable one. Stable stable points. So if you are to plot a bifurcation diagram for this problem for this particular value of h, then the bifurcation diagram would look like this. So this is to them. This is a start. So we always had that uh, positive fixed point staying, but um. We had the three critical values epsilon c1, epsilon c2, and epsilon c3. So we had something like this. This fixed points would emerge at epsilon c1 and another fixed point of c3. And they will again emerge and disappear together. On the other end, we will have a branch emerging from epsilon c2, which will go into like that. So this is what the bifurcation diagrams were both. So the fixed points that had emerged at epsilon to go to epsilon c1 would again merge and disappear when epsilon becomes equal to epsilon c3. And find that very large epsilon have one fixed point over here and four would be two fixed points over here. Okay, so that uh, completes the lecture for today. In the next class, we will uh, study a model of fisheries, which is even quite similar to the model for an insect outbreak. And after that, we would go on to flows on a circle, where we will see how oscillating systems look like and how different oscillating systems can synchronize with each other.